Glad to be before you once again this day. Commenting on the song leading, I would echo what Stephen said. I would be out of a job as well. But not like it matters. I'm not using my degree anyway. Um, I would point out, though, I do appreciate these classes. One, mainly because I have no idea what I'm doing when I get up here and lead a song, although I'm trying to do better. It's not about imposing more rules on us. It's about putting our best forward for our Creator as we praise Him in song. And I think we need to realize that, not just in singing, but especially throughout the period of worship, but also throughout our entire lives. I will get off my soapbox and get on to another one. Uh, this afternoon, as we typically try to do, we want to extend an invitation for those who would wish to obey the gospel or to have their, uh, their sins removed as a child of God to go forward throughout this, this little talk. I would like for us to consider Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. This particular passage is one that is, is very special to me, uh, particularly because of, of a dark period in, in my life, um, which I will not get into right now. But it was able to get me through those tough times mentally. There are, the beloved physician says, again, Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 7, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. According to the ISBE, I really enjoy that volume. It has this as a comment regarding sparrows. This is a reference to the common custom in the east of catching small birds and selling them to be skinned roasted and sold as quote tidbits a bird to a mouthful now I think whenever I read that I thought of whenever we used to shoot doves and you'd get through all that work of pulling feathers off and skinning them and you got this little cluster of meat and then you cut it open shove a jalapeno in there and maybe some cream cheese and wrap it in bacon that's obviously not what they do in the east but that's, again, what I thought of when I read that. But that's their custom. And uh, if you know anything about sparrows, they're, they're fun little birds. They're friendly. Um, they seem to be quite spastic. But they're never alone. There's quite a few of them. They, I guess they travel in packs, if you will, or flocks, rather. In this life, no matter where you go and who you talk with and who you deal with, at some point, more than likely, you will face somebody that makes it their life's goal to degrade you, to tear you down. And it might be simply because you're a Christian. We would call this religious persecution. Or it could just be simply because you exist and they exist. And they're meaner than a rattlesnake, as we've often said at some, some point. But nonetheless, some have nothing else better to do than to find fault in others, tear them down because it makes them feel better. I forget who sang that country song, but she said, uh, you can feel bad if it makes you feel better. And unfortunately, that is a lot of folks' life philosophy. We see this mentality in Satan himself back in the garden while tempting Eve. 
Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. There Satan was. He saw an opportunity to tempt the woman, and he took it, and she succumbed. It should not surprise us that we come into contact with folks like this. Unfortunately, his children behave just as their father, that is Satan. John chapter 8 verse 44 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. Satan has his own children. They behave just like he does and oftentimes they might appear unto us as angels of light. They're good comedians if you want to think of it like that. However, with our text in mind, no matter if there's somebody trying to snatch us, obviously there's very few people out there that would eat us. You know, we, we watch shows about murders and whatnot, and there are cannibals, but that's not the point of this. Some people are out there to try to get us, to snatch us up, to tear us down, whether it's because it makes them feel better or simply because we're doing what God says, those people are out there, and they're doing the bidding of their father, Satan. However, keeping in mind the text that we read earlier, we point out that God loved us so much that He gave us His Son. The second person of the Godhead came to the earth, lived in the flesh, and ultimately died for us because the Father loved us. John 3.16 as, Romans, as well as Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, which reads, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Now, hearkening back to the text, I am so very thankful that a number is not given. Well, what do I mean by that? There in verse 7, But even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. In verse 6, it mentions five sparrows being sold for two farthings. Well, I'm glad it didn't put six sparrows. You're worth more than six sparrows. Instead, he says, many sparrows. Now, I don't know how many that is, and that's not the point. It's more than a little, as has been said oftentimes. The point is there that God takes note of even the single sparrow that falls from the sky. What do you think he does for each of us as individuals, as has been said before, the crowning jewel of creation? It was mentioned yesterday when, when God got done or completed each day of creation. He said, thus and so was good. And on the sixth day, he looked out on everything and said it was very good. Well, the difference was mankind was there that day. We are God's crowning jewel of creation. And he thinks that highly of us. We're worth more than many sparrows regardless of how others might treat us, whether because we're a Christian or just because we got in their way that one day. Knowing this, knowing that God cares for you, even though you're a sinner, why not become a Christian today? Why not become His child today? Or if you already are a Christian, why not put away the sin that hinders you from enjoying the benefits that comes from being a child of God? Why not be restored this afternoon? So whichever need that you might have of these two, please make it known as we have the invitation song.